Hey, what's up, guys? How's it going? I'm going to be uh, rocking the glasses for a couple of days. I recently had a little bit of an issue with my cornea, but uh, don't worry. All is well. I'll be back in my contact lenses soon enough. Um, I asked you guys in my previous science video, the Ultimate EFT Ammo Guide, if you guys wanted me to break down, uh, you know, go into a little bit more depth, how damage is distributed throughout your body when you have, um, you know, blacked out limbs and stuff like that. So I put together uh, a little bit of a rundown. Uh, it's not as in-depth as the ammo guide, but uh, this is obviously much, much smaller of a topic. But I think this is really interesting and a lot of people don't know how it works. So uh, I hope you guys learned some stuff. I hope uh, you find this interesting and you enjoy. And um, I appreciate all the, uh, the love and support and everything. We are already at 115,000 subs. So thank you guys again. Uh, yeah, do the whole like and subscribe thing, blah, 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 blah. Let's, uh, let's get to the show. Understanding how damage is distributed throughout the body is another interesting realm and is a bit confusing at first. But I'm going to try and explain it as simply as I can here, breaking down how the game processes the damage step by step. First, the damage is applied to the targeted zone of the body. If the damage value is less than the current zone's HP, then the current zone is reduced by that amount. Otherwise, the limb becomes blacked out or has zero HP. If the limb is the thorax or the head, then you're dead. Now, if the limb is any other part of the body, the next process that takes place is handling the overflow damage. Now, each limb type has a blacked out limb damage multiplier value. Now, again, these are subject to change at any time, but the current values are as follows. Arms have a 0.7 multiplier value, legs have a 1.0 multiplier value, and the stomach has a 1.5 multiplier value. Note here, obviously, that the, uh, the thorax and the head don't have multiplier values because it's a not much to multiply when you're a corpse. So the overflow damage is multiplied by this value, giving you the total damage that is then distributed to every other zone of the body. Now, the following is the most important part of the current health system, and in, in my opinion is either bugged or needs serious adjustment. First, we're gonna iterate through every zone of the body, excluding the you know initial impact zone, and calculate the damage that it's going to take. So the interesting part of this process is that each zone will have different amounts of damage taken from them. It's all relative to the size of this zone's health pool. So put another way, every zone will have the same proportional amount taken from them. Their relative damages are all going to be the same. You're, you're going to see their health bars um, all reduced by the same amount. Although their absolute values are going to differ quite a bit because each of their health bars represents a different amount of HP. So in order to do this process, the game determines what percent that zone makes up of the total HP of the body when at full health. That percent is then multiplied by the total overflow damage value we calculated before and is then applied to each respective zone. Now here's a breakdown of each of the zones and their you know total HP pools relative to the total health HP pool as a whole. So after this process happens, we're going to check again to see if the thorax or the head have been reduced down to zero as a result of this overflow damage, and if so, again, you're dead. Now real quick, I want to mention that while damage bringing your head or thorax to zero will kill you instantly, if you have a bleed and the bleeding reduces your head or thorax to zero, you will not die. So this is how it's possible to have a blacked out chest or a head and still be alive, which is something a lot of us see from time to time. and. Sometimes think it's a bug or, you know, we're confused by what we're looking at, but, but that usually explains most cases. So when we're iterating through each zone of the body to distribute the damage, what about if that zone is already blacked out? It's a great question. That zone is skipped. Yep, that's right. It's skipped. That means that the damage that was going to be applied to this zone goes nowhere. It's gone, wasted. It, it doesn't get spread out to any of the other limbs. It's simply dropped on the floor. So note the order of these steps too. Recall that the first check in the overflow damage process was to see if the zone was blacked out, and if so, skip it. Later, after we distribute the damage to the other non-zeroed zones, we check the chest and head to see if the overflow damage brought that value to zero. So this means that if your head or your chest has, say, one HP, and you're shot in your blacked out arm, you're going to die instantly because that overflow damage will be applied to that one HP, which will kill you. But if your head or your chest were at zero HP from a bleed, as mentioned previously, and you're shot in your blacked out arm, 
you'll actually survive because those zones are going to be skipped entirely that again that damage gets dropped on the floor so this is something that i found out last year sometime i'll, I'll pop a link into that video into the corner of the screen now you're going to want to check that out okay so now let's take a look at a real example of this process in full to try to get a better understanding for how this works i'm going to use the damage calculator in the battle buddy app um you know as a as a corollary for this process but if you uh, you know if you don't believe me that this is how it works in the game feel free to go to go try it out now let's say your enemy is a full health pmc first you shoot them in the arm with sp6 which is going to do 58 damage so this is not enough to black out the limb so two hp remains in the zone now shooting them in the arm again will first do the remaining two hp damage and then the rest 56 is then processed as overflow damage so that 56 is multiplied by the multiplier for the limb that you hit, which in this case was the arm, which as mentioned before is 0.7. So that ends up equaling 39.2-ish uh, overflow damage that is then going to be distributed to the remainder of the body. So because the head is about 8% of the total body's HP, 35, you know, divided by 435, it's going to take 8% of this 39.2 overflow, which equals about 3.2 damage. So note that we're dealing with decimals here in all the math, but the game UI only shows whole numbers. The end result is going to be slightly misleading in many cases after all is said and done, um, just because the game isn't rounding for the sake of calculations, but it is rounding for the sake of display. Let's continue. The thorax being about 18% of the body's total HP ends up taking the same percent of that overflow damage, which equals 7.2 approximately. So this process continues for all the other limbs, leaving you with a displayed HP of 341, the total of all of the displayed HP rounded integer values. But at the end of the day, you're actually closer to about 336 total HP, but the six remaining zones all have less than they display because of those fractions. Given that these numbers are displayed as integers and you have seven zones, but the underlying system uses floating point or decimal values, your total HP can be off sometimes as much as six or seven points in some situations, which is not insignificant. So keep that in mind when things get weird and the numbers don't always match up if you're trying to test these things out. So let's do one more example showcasing the issue before I mentioned about blacked out limbs resulting in ignored damage. Suppose your target has been through some shit. He's taken tons of damage, you know, out of meds, whatever, but he only has a bit of his thorax and head remaining. Let's say you have no idea, you know, what his status is, but you can see he's rocking some heavy armor. So you say, okay, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm using this SP6. You know, maybe, uh, maybe I should ignore the, uh, the armor. I don't know what the status is. And maybe I don't know a whole lot about SP6. So let's just go for his legs. Now hitting his blacked out leg with the same SP5 bullet doing 58 damage, the blacked out limb modifier for legs is 1.0. So what do you think that the total HP is going to be if they start out with 96 HP and you hit them in their blacked out leg for 58 damage? Now you might think that you'd see the health go down from 96 to 38, given that your bullet does 58. But as I mentioned before, that's not the case. In fact, it's far, far less than that. After hitting them in the leg again, they'll be down to 81 HP. That's only 15 less than they started. Why? Well, let's step through the process again to try to make sense of this. We need to distribute the 58 damage throughout the non-impact zones of the body, keeping in mind their HP total proportion to their entire body, etc., etc. So starting with the other leg, it's blacked out, so let's ignore it. Then the left arm, that's blacked out. The right arm's blacked out. The stomach's blacked out. Okay, well, now onto the thorax. The thorax ends up being about 10 damage because of, you know, the proportion of the total HP and the head ends up being about five damage, which results in 15 total damage. This explains the reduction from 96 to 81, 15 damage. All of that damage to the other limbs is simply skipped, ignored. It goes poof. This is the reason why I'm typically against the leg meta or any other tactics that involve shooting anything other than the chest or the head. At the end of the day, the entirety of the target's death depends on their head and their chest reaching zero. Every bullet that hits something other than those zones directly will have some amount of his damage wasted, either to overflow or to, you know, being ignored, or, you know, maybe the multiplier is less than one. So I'd much rather try to punch through their armor and do as much direct damage to these two lethal zones as possible than try to indirectly whittle them down with 
you know, fractions of overflow damage from other limbs. It's simply more efficient and more effective, in my opinion. All right, so the last few things about damage I want to get out of the way, but not go into, you know, super in-depth specifics or anything, because honestly, most of them are kind of boring, and a lot of them aren't hugely impactful for the gameplay, but, uh, but let, let's just go through them. Tarkov does simulate the flight of the bullet in a, for the most part, realistic way. The longer the bullet's in the air, the more damage is reduced, but it's extremely minor and in most cases doesn't have a noticeable effect, so for all intents and purposes, just, just ignore it. The firearm is not relevant in any way to the damage of a single bullet. Modifying a gun does not increase or decrease the resulting damage that the fired bullet does, including things like adding a longer barrel to increase muzzle velocity. It, it simply doesn't have an effect. Um, it, it's either so minimal or there is none at all, so just don't, don't sweat it. The only relevant factor regarding firearms in this case is their rate of fire, which I'll get to later. It is possible for ammo to impact one part of the body, fully penetrate it, and then impact another body part, or even another target completely. I'll, we'll get into penetration in a bit. Now, finally, as most of you know, there are different character types in the game, from PMCs, scavs, raiders, bosses, guards, etc. They all have drastically different health pools in many cases, and knowing this can be extremely useful when fighting them. Have a look at some of these screenshots from inside the app where I have uh, the damage calculator, and you can see just how thick some of these boys really are. Alright guys, so that's it for this one. I hope you found it interesting. I'm going to be doing a bunch more videos coming up soon, probably uh, diving a little bit deeper into some of the more specific uh, calibers and ammo types. Um, you know, maybe doing a rundown that I'll, that I'll keep up to date regularly, helping people make, you know, better informed decisions about ammo um, with, with, you know, hopefully most of the common calibers. And, uh, you know, I got a bunch of other stuff coming up, like a, a refresh of my Comtax video. Uh, probably going to wait until they, uh, they release the next patch because there's a new set of headphones in that one too. So keep an eye out for that. But uh, anyway, I'll see you guys later. Have a good one.